everyone, welcome to Glow with Grace. So today I wanted to do a special video sharing information about the newest member of our clan here, Kinka, who's a little mouse. Um, I introduced Kinka to you guys um, in a recent video, just briefly, and a lot of you were asking to hear more about his story. So here we go, I'm going to try to cover everything today. Also, I'm really sorry um, if some people got kind of freaked out seeing him. I totally didn't make that association in my head that some people get freaked out by mice. I just don't have that in my head for some reason. Um, you know, I get that people sometimes are scared of spiders and snakes and stuff like that, but I just, I didn't have that connection. So, um, yeah, I I have no fear of Kinka, obviously. <laughs> and. Um, I know one person said that she wanted to get over her fears of rodents, so maybe Kinker's going to help you. Maybe that's part of his dharma here. Okay, so where to begin? I found Kinker and three of his brothers and one of his sisters on May the 7th this year, which is um, almost a month ago now. I believe that they were probably born on April the 28th. Eighth. So today when I'm recording, I believe that he's five weeks old and he has definitely at least doubled in size since I found them and probably more like tripled in size. Um, okay, so how did I find them? <laughs> I was out on a bike ride um, that morning, May the 7th, and I was almost done. I was almost home. I was literally like 20 foot probably from our front gate and I heard this squeaking and I was like what is that and I stopped my bike and I was looking around and long story short I found Kinka and three of his brothers and one of his sisters lying on the side of the road all just like in a complete mess on the side of the road like on their back <laughs> like trying to find their mum I think I mean I don't know what happened their mum didn't make it I don't know what the deal was but they were just like in a state on the side of the road um, they already had fur, which is such a good sign in terms of their being able to survive compared to if they are still pink. When they're still pink, it's like it's pretty much completely impossible to help them to survive without um, a mouse mother at that point. Um, <laughs> I think I mentioned this before, this is not the first time I've found baby mice. This has kept happening in my life in the past couple of years. I just keep finding baby mice all the time um, and Kinka is the first one who has made it who has made it to like adulthood um, so yeah these guys I believe when I found them that they were like 10 days old um, they already had fur they didn't have their eyes open so that's that makes it a bit trickier once they have their eyes open there's a pretty good chance that they'll survive um, but uh, yeah so they had their fur they had no eyes open and so I began, once again, around the clock care for Kinker and his brothers and sister. It's really, really intense looking after baby mice. Um, it's around the clock job. Literally like every two, three hours they require food in the form of some kind of animal milk preferably. I was using raw local cow's milk. Um, and you like, I was using like a dropper bottle, you know, like, oh, here's one. For example, this is like an iodine dropper bottle. Um, so I would fill a bottle similar to this with warm, raw cow's milk. And then um, with the dropper, I would dropper it into their mouth. <laughs> it's climbing in my hair. <laughs> I would dropper it into their mouths. Um, and, you know, the, ah! <laughs> That just went on for days and days because they were like 10 days old and they don't wean until they're about three weeks old. So, um, and obviously cow's milk might not be the greatest choice for a mouse. I mean, there's a very big difference in body size between a cow and a mouse. Um, if you could get goat's milk or other kind of animal milk, I mean, even, I don't know, human breast milk? I, we didn't go there. We used local cow milk. Um, 
Yeah, so around the clock, every two or three hours, giving milk. And then they also, when they're that young, they're not able to go to the bathroom by themselves. So this is something that their mother does for them, is she stimulates the, like, kind of perineum area, and they either pee or poo, depending on what they want to do at that point. Um, so, in the absence of the mother, um, what we were doing was we had Q-tips, like just so many Q-tips, and you stimulate the perineum area with a Q-tip and they either pee or poo. So you're like simulating what the mother would be doing. If you don't do that, they cannot go to the bathroom by themselves and everything would back up and they would die. So yeah, that's the reality of trying to raise baby mice um, without their mother is around the clock care all through the night food, going to the bathroom, all that kind of stuff. It was nuts so with five of them all at the same time. Um, and I honestly don't know why Kinka's brothers and sister didn't make it. It was really bizarre. Um, the first one who passed over, his name was Stubber, and he had a, like a funny little stubby tail. He seemed to be the strongest the entire time. He was always eating really well, he was going to the bathroom really well, he was really lively and energetic. And then suddenly he just, you could see that the energy, the life force was just like draining out of him and a few hours later he wasn't there anymore. And then the same thing happened with another one, and then another one, another one. And so I just, at that point was like, it's just, it's so hard to do this, they just don't make it. And I didn't know, you know, if any of them were going to make it. And then Kinka pulled through. And he, officially in Mouse World, is an adult now. They become an adult at, like, four weeks of age. So, as far as we know, you know, he's here with us now for the, at least the next few months. I learned that in the wild, mice typically only live for, like, five months. You know, they have a pretty short lifespan. They're easy prey for so many other animals. Um, when they live with humans like this they can live sometimes like two years so we'll see I mean obviously he's not like a domesticated breed he's like total wild animal which feels pretty odd you know in many ways to like have a wild animal living with us in a cage it's kind of like I don't know just it feels pretty strange but at the same time I am almost certain, I think I said this before, that if I if I tried to put him out in the wild, you know, he wouldn't even make it through the day. You can see, like, how much he likes being with humans. He's just hanging out with us. He has, like, such a cushy, cozy life here. Um, so now he's, like, totally weaned. He weaned himself at, like, three weeks, three, yeah, something like that, of milk. And he eats all kinds of different solid things now and he has a kind of water bottle that he drinks water from so the kind of things that he likes are like nuts and seeds he loves pine nuts that's like his favorite it's so sweet if you give him something like that he you know they use their little hands like a human and he puts it in with their little nuts he likes fruits and vegetables he loves spirulina crunchies you know these oh, what did i do with the bag here it is, spirulina crunchies, um, like little crunchy yummers bits of spirulina. Um, we just discovered a couple of days ago, he's really into that. <laughs> um, what else does he like? When we make juice, he likes the pulp from the carrot pulp. He likes the um, sliced young coconut meat. Um, yeah, I don't know, all different little things like that, and it's ridiculous how small the amounts of food that he eats are. Like, um, I use, uh, like, bottle tops, bottle caps as, like, um, his plates, and I'll put some stuff into a plate for him, and it seems like such a tiny amount of food, but then when I come back, you know, the next day or whatever to change his food out. He hasn't even eaten, you know, like half of it because he's just, he's so tiny. He doesn't need that much food. So, um, in terms of Araya, 
our daughter with this little guy, arrived 18 months old. Um, when I first found the five of them, the five mice, it was just like chaos with Araya. She just couldn't handle it. I think I mentioned this before. It was like absolute over the top, overstimulation, just couldn't handle it with her. Um, she was like way too excited about them and she wanted to hold them and she didn't want to hold them and she just couldn't handle it, you know, she was like too excited. Um, and she would just be like, baby, baby, all the time. Um, these days she's calmed down a lot, you know, he's been here for three something weeks now. Um, and he's bigger, like he's at least two, three times the size he was when we found him. Um, and she can just handle it a lot better now, like, she, she wants to see him a lot, like, every time she kind of, like, looks that way where he is, or she thinks about him, she'll be like, baby, baby, or she'll say, mouse, and, um, she'll want to go and get him out of his little house, and usually it's me holding him, usually she wants me to hold him, but sometimes she wants him to be in her hand, and, and she just wants to, like, stroke him, and give him food, and so it's really sweet now. Um, in the beginning when there were five of them and she was going so crazy it was just really challenging because you know they need so much attention around the clock and if she was there when I was trying to like feed them and stuff I was just like oh my god completely nuts so oh I Simba <laughs> oh Simba yeah we don't want Simba to eat him do we He's a baby, yeah. Araya. He's called Kinka. Mm. Uh -oh, baby. Uh -oh. Okay, so this is Kinka's home. Um, we got this from the nearby city um, a few days after I had first found the five of them because we have two cats and they were the mice were in just like a cardboard box to begin with and I was just getting like really nervous. They were growing up, their eyes were opening, they were starting to run around, the cats wanted to eat them. So we got this cage um, and it has an opening there and an opening down here and it has this funny little house up here and two slides to go up and down and a wheel back there that he's not interested in. Water bottle, that's different food for him. Um, and a couple of toilet roll things. And then this is a mass of like soft twigs. It was so sweet. One of our workers here, Pepe, one of the garden guys, um, he made this like kind of little nest of soft twigs for Kinka um, when it was clear that like Kinka was the one who was gonna survive. He was like, um, I made this little nest for him. This is what the, the kind of thing that they usually sleep in. It's so sweet, and that is actually Kinka's favourite place to be these days. He likes to nestle into that little nest. So this is where he runs around and sleeps and eats and drinks and stuff, and, and he comes out a lot during the day to sit with us and for Araya to see him and stuff like that. Oh, and it's right next to a dehydrator because... Um, we have kind of quite an open house. There's a lot of screens instead of walls and stuff and it can get quite cold at night So he during the daytime. He's just like this totally open air, but at night I push him his little house Next to the dehydrator like this and I cover the whole thing up with a towel I mean leaving air obviously, but almost completely cover it up with a towel um, So that he has a nice warm environment to keep him all cozy for the night so that's something else about when they're babies with baby mice and you're trying to help them to survive. Um, they can't regulate their body temperature much like human babies and I, I imagine like many different babies. So uh, it's absolutely key to keep them warm. You've got to keep them like bundled up in some kind of cozy nest and warm like next to the dehydrator has been our main thing for keeping them warm. Um, yeah, otherwise they just you know, it's, it's too hard for them to keep their body temperature up.
now that he's an adult, he can regulate his body temperature much better. So, oh, the main place where I was learning everything about the mice is a fantastic website for this. It's called thefunmouse.com. You have to put the at the beginning, thefunmouse.com. Otherwise, you end up on a different site, thefunmouse.com. Um, huge kudos and gratitude and thanks to that website. Um, as I said, this isn't the first time that I found baby mice, so I've read quite a lot online before when I've been trying to help baby mice to survive. Um, and I had never seen this website before, thefunmouse.com, and this time when I had them all and I was looking everything up again, this website was just like gold. It's so much information, really detailed. Um, on every aspect you could imagine <laughs> about looking after baby mice. So, um, thank you to the Fun Mouse, and I highly recommend checking out their website if you have any questions or interest in any of this stuff. I know for some people, they're probably just like, <laughs> with this whole video. Um, yeah, this is just what's been going on for me the last month or so. Um, I've been very much involved in mouse world and unfolding my mouse karma drama of my life. Um, I really hope this is the end of my mouse karma drama. Um, yeah, it feels like, you know, when I first started to find the baby mice and they would die all the time, I would, it would really, really pull on my heartstrings like crazy. It was really challenging for me. And as time has gone on, and I've experienced more and more, um, I'm able to process their passings with a lot more grace. And I feel like that has been a big part of this journey as well. And maybe Kinka's survival at this point is some kind of reward <laughs> in some way for playing out this process. I'm not sure. Whatever it is, I'm glad that he's here. Um, he's a very sweet little part of our reality now. Our cats are always trying to get him still, of course. They're always trying to get into this room and they knock his cage over and crazy stuff like that. But um, overall, everything seems to be really good with little Kinka and he's just a little blessing in our lives. So. I hope this has been interesting to some people and I'll see you next time. Ciao.